In 1907, Thomas Hunt Morgan began to extensively breed the common fruit, fruit fly to better understand evolution through the inheritance of traits. Through Morgan's experiments, he and his students, they did notice that when they did a cross of two heterozygous parents, the offspring did not follow the classic 9331 ratio that Mendel observed. And we can see that ratio right here. This is what Mendel would have suggested, and Morgan and his students understood Mendelian genetics. So this result led Morgan and his team of students to develop a technique to map the exact location of where genes are on chromosomes. But let's begin to look at why fruit fly traits do not follow classical Mendelian genetics, and then how this can be used to map genes. All right, let's start. So here we have a true breed, straight wing and black body, mated with a true breed, curlied wing and gray body. So we see the gametes, uh, as expected, are just uh, big S, big B, and little s, little b. That's all we would expect. So if we combine these in a Punnett square, and all of the F1 generation are going to be heterozygous, as we can see here. They're going to be phenotypically straight wings with black body. Now when we cross the F1 generation, we can see that we only form two different gametes. In the previous examples we learned with Mendelian genetics, these would have formed four different gametes, but not this time. These genes are on the same chromosome, and they are linked. They do not separate as easily as the traits that Mendel studied on plants. Those traits were on separate genes, or sorry, separate chromosomes, and they can easily separate. These genes were on the same chromosome and were linked. So, why do we only get two different gametes instead of four? Again, this is because the genes are on the same chromosome, so they do not separate. So let's just plug these gametes into a Punnett square, and we get two different phenotypes as shown here. Now the F2 generation show, they do show limited genetic vari variability, as we can see. The F2 generation will demonstrate only parental phenotypes. And in fact, this 3 to 1 ratio that's here, this, this begins to look a lot like a monohybrid cross. Now, in the actual experiment that, um, that uh, Morgan and his students ran, uh, he got uh, some of these, we got some new phenotypes in the uh, F2 generation shown here on the side. Uh, we see some with straight wings, gray bodies, and a few had curly wings and black bodies. These variations are very different, as you can see, from the P1 and F1. If you look at P1 and F1, you don't see these types. So how is this possible? If a straight wing allele is attached to the same chromosome as a black body allele, how do these alleles separate and get into gametes that combine and give us the straight wing phenotype gray body in some of the offspring? Ultimately, these results observed uh, these results were observed and, um, you know, again, a little over a hundred years ago. They, they led to the development of techniques that are still used today to map exactly where genes are in chromosomes. Because the way those genes separated, there was a pattern, okay? So it wasn't the same as the Mendel pattern, but it, there was a pattern and they used that pattern to figure out how far those genes are apart on the chromosome. We're going to look at that. Let's see what we learn next.